we just have to introduce two more terms, and then we've covered all the types of transformations that we would be doing to the sine and cosine graphs. So here's f of x equals 2 sine of 3 x minus pi over 6 plus 1. And the graph is here below, and we'll examine it in a second. But just note that um, if g of x equals sine x, sort of the basic parent function of this, then f of x here would be 2 times g of 3 x minus pi over 6 plus 1. So these are all transformations we talked about, but they're kind of all happening at once, right? That 2, we know what it does. That 3, we know what it does. The x minus the pi over 6, we know what it does. And the plus 1, we know what it does. We know what all these things do. We just have to apply some definitions to them because they, they have special meanings in the real world. Okay, so in general, if we have a function that looks either like this one here or this one here, then what we are looking at is called a sinusoid. Okay, these are, and these are the forms of what are called sinusoid. And these, their graphs are sinusoidal graphs. Graphs basically that on, on a first glance look like they could be a sine or a cosine graph are called sinusoids. They're sinusoidal. So in terms of definitions, we've already covered amplitude, period, and frequency. So all I want to do is, in this example, calculate what it would be. So <clears throat> I gave a definition of our amplitude, and it was the distance from the average value to the max value and the min value. So the average value here, um, well, first, just notice that the, the, the quick way we can get it is it's the absolute value of our A value, which is the absolute value of 2 which is 2. But it's also, you could also get it by doing our max value plus the min, uh, no, not plus the min, minus the min divided by 2. Which in our case over here, so again, these are, you should look over to the example. In our case, the maximum value is a 3, and the minimum value is a negative 1. So in our case, it would be 3 minus negative 1 divided by 2. But that's 4 over 2, which is 2. So either way you calculate it, you get a 2. There's our amplitude. Notice that also means that our average value, our average, oh, I wish I could do a straight line. The average value is, uh, is the number that's right in the middle of negative 1 and 3, uh, which happens to be 1. So our average value is 1 for this function. The period, well, we know how to calculate the period. It's equal to 2 pi divided by our b value. And in our case, it would be 2 pi divided by... 3. And that you should confirm that because if I start here and note where I start to repeat, you'll see that I repeat at 2 pi over 3. And our frequency, we knew it was the reciprocal of periods, so that's 2 pi, uh, b divided by 2 pi which in our case is 3 over 2 pi, which means it does 3 cycles on the interval 0 to 2 pi. And if we count 1, 2, 3, we get 3 cycles on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So phase shift is new. Phase shift is, um, is the... Horizontal shift of 
of the function with respect to the parent function. And our parent function would be, you know, y equals sine of x or y equals cosine of x, depending on which one, depending on which case we're looking at up here. So horizontal shift would be, uh, so where do you look? You look at the c value. You look at the c value. And so in our case, pi x minus pi over 6, that means in our case, In our example, we would say that the horror, that the phase shift is right, because x minus pi over shift implies a movement right, pi over six. And notice that's uh, that's what happened here because the normal this is the graph of sine, right? Uh, the sine graph normally starts it normally starts right here, goes up, down, up, down, right. It normally starts right here at zero, but now it doesn't start there. So again, the sine graph, for the sine graph, it normally starts here, and this is like the midline, right? Now that plus one got shifted the whole graph up one, but it also got shifted to the right, pi over six. So if, if I just trace this for you, you'll see this is the sine shape, right? That's the sine shape, and it's beginning itself at pi over six there. And it was shifted right pi over 6. It got shifted up too, but the point we're just looking at how it was shifted right. right. That sine shape now is occurring starting at pi over 6 when it normally started at 0. Okay, right pi over shift. And the vertical shift is our, horizontal, uh, our vertical it's just our vertical change. Uh, with respect to the parent function. So in our example, uh, you can see that the graph, the sine graph got shifted up one. The midline is now up at one. And that right there is responsible for our vertical, our vertical shift. So we would just say shift it up one. And there we have it. So once you take into account the two and the three, which we, we looked at before, you've got these last two transformations, which cause the graph to shift right pi over six and up one. And there now is where sine is starting, up here at pi over six comma one.